Pete Calandra here. Today's video on scoring short films takes a look at writing music for an animatic. An animatic is a string of storyboard images edited together with sound to illustrate how a sequence will flow with motion. You can think of it as an animated storyboard with sound and music. This piece, titled Faustina, was put together by my filmmaker friend Carl Polino to help pitch it as an animated series to production companies. While the piece has full dialogue from beginning to end, he did not want to give away the story. So while I have permission to show the film, I had to stop the dialogue after the opening scene. One can still get the point of how the music fits in with the content of this project. Another word, I'm using the notation that comes with Pro Tools, so some of the rhythms and enharmonic spelling of notes is not spot on. To get a more accurate reading of the notation, I'd have to send it to Sibelius and work on it there. That being said, it's good enough to make the point. I've also reduced the notation to a four system sketch score for winds, brass, pitched percussion, such as piano or harp, and strings. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Leave any comments below. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Now remember, go straight to Mr. Pozo. Don't stop along the way to play with any stray dogs. But if you do, for all that is still good in this world, don't bring it home. Don't become the animals. Got it. You don't want to be late, so no dilly-dallying. Mama, I have no idea what a dilly-dally is. Faustina. What? And don't forget to go to school. What is the school that you speak of? Mwah.
And a fade out on the end credits. For those of you who've seen the previous videos in this series, this setup should look familiar. While I look at each project and take a unique creative approach that's defined by the goal of the project, some technical things set up in advance, especially for a film score, make it easier to have that creative freedom and allows me to get into the flow much quicker. Not having to think about purely technical aspects leaves more space in your mind for creative endeavors. In this piece, I'm using Spitfire Audio Studio Woodwinds along with Albion 1 and Albion Iceni sections. I'm also keeping all articulations on one track using a combination of UACC and key switching to change articulations. In this piece, there's piccolo, solo flute, alto flute, oboe, clarinet, and then I've got my high winds VCA, which I've talked about in previous episodes, bass clarinet, bassoon, high winds, low winds, and a second low winds, which are Albion 3. These two are Albion 1. Scrolling down a little further, the brass is the cinematic studio brass, which blends very well with the Spitfire Studio series. So we've got solo trumpet, solo horn, four horns. We've got our brass VCA, high brass VCA, solo trombone, solo bass trombone, tuba, and then Albion three low brass. All the pitched percussion is from the Joby Burgess Library by Spitfire, xylophone, glock, marimba, vibes, tubular bell. The piano is the German D from Ivory. We have three harp tracks. The first one is by Sonic Implants which was one of the first really good orchestral libraries. And I had this in its original Giga Studio form well over 15 years ago. And they ported it over to Contact, and I still use it fairly often because it sounds really good. Here, let me give you a little taste of this. Really beautiful. We also have the Spitfire harp and the 8DO AGE harps. The rest of the percussion are also from the Joby Burgess collection, two timpanis, one regular and one effects, high drums, snare, percussion toys, castanets, cymbals, gong and tam. And finally, the strings are a combination of Spitfire Symphonic, Albion One, Albion Tundra, and the chamber strings. Below that, I've got five time-based effects. The Fab Filter Hall, Sound Toys Little Plate, Lexicon PCM Chamber, Waves H Delay, and Sound Toys Echo Boy. And then below that, I've got all of my sub-master tracks for all the different sections. And then my music track, which has a little bit of a mastering chain. I guess I could show you that. So I've got the 
Equaltech EQP1 from UA, Brainworks BXXL V2, which I use for some compression and for stereo widening, C4 by Waves, and then my final plugin is the Waves L3LL Ultra Maximizer. Now, one thing that you'll notice for the strings is in this piece, I'm using all section strings except for celli and basses. And why is that? I had to turn this out really fast. I really had two days to write this whole piece. It had to be done, had to be out the door. So for me to individually play all the parts in after I write it and do all the editing work and everything, I just didn't have time to do that. Again, like I said, it sounds pretty good. I'd like to spend a minute talking about musical intent. This is a kid's programming. As such, I like to keep the ensemble sizes under control, hence quite a few solo instruments in the winds and brass, as well as using the studio series to control the actual size of the room. As I've worked on quite a bit of kids programming for both Sesame Street, the Special Olympics, and actually other projects as well, one thing I like to keep in mind is that I never speak down to the audience. I may tone down some of the emotional dynamic range, but I do not attempt to write kids music. This is a comedic piece, so I write music that works in that genre and with this film. So what I've done here on the opening credits, I've got an up-tempo piece. I've got some rhythmic elements that I can bring variations in as the score develops. Remember, my premise for writing short film scores is that they end up sounding like a musical suite rather than long form where you have a lot of time to develop things. Things have to come in relatively quickly and they have to make their point pretty fast. I've got a rhythmic element here and I've got some melodic elements and I've got an overall mood and a feel. Right away in the strings, I've got this figure which is C, E, and F, and then I just move the E back and forth to a D. I emphasize that in the harp with this figure. Those two parts kind of lock in together really well, and they sort of propel the piece. They give it a kind of impetuous feel to it. And then what I've done with the melodic content is I've created something where it feels like I'm mixing modes a little bit. And also, the line is ascending. It's uplifting, comedy, fun. It's as simple as that, writing an ascending melody. And what I've done here is something that kind of mixes modes. I'm definitely in the key of F major. But I start this off on the fifth C, and you almost get like a mix Mixolydian I further confuse things a little bit by having I don't have the A so you don't really get a sense that there's a major triad there and I think that that's really effective where I do add the A is right here in the winds and I've talked about this also in previous videos where I like to do things that lead us into the downbeat of the next measure. So I've got this little figure here in the strings, and I've got the last bit of it emphasized here in the upper winds where I do add the third in. It dovetails over into the end of one of the next measure, dovetailing with the start of the melody. So let's listen to all of that, just that little beat at the beginning. <laughs> Now, another thing, too, is that, so I got the da 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 Breaking down those eight eighth notes in the measure of 4-4 into groups of three, three, and two, a very effective way of breaking up something that's in 4-4. I play that against the straighter. going against combining these elements like this gives you a nice little bit of a drive and then what happens here in measure three is that i've got an answering phrase again ascending in the brass so let's listen to that Now to transition into the beginning of the film, I'm doing this little crazy figure here, a scale run up, and I'm emphasizing B flat, and I've got this chord here, it's B flat in the bass.
So it's basically like an F suspended chord with a major seventh with a B flat in the bass. There are other ways of looking at this. You could think of this as a B flat nine with a sharp 11, uh, no third. That's the subject of another video when I start talking about harmonies, which I've got planned for the summer. Let's take a listen to this beginning music here. So it's basically like walking music almost, right? Very simple. That's a melodic figure that I can bring back in a few times during the course of the film. One thing that's kind of cool, though, is... Instead of... Instead of going one, five, one, five, I'm going one, four, one, four. Emphasizing that B flat there which is kind of in keeping with that previous chord we just had. All this stuff is kind of relatable. And then when we get over here into this section, When we get to this point, we've got this kind of crazy scale here. It's sort of like a half diminished scale, like the beginning of it. That's diminished, but then changes at the end there. I'll do a lot of scale figures like that and break things up like I do here. So you see how I changed the orchestration? It's not the same orchestration going up and coming down. And then this is a nice chord here. We got G, C, E, and then up here C, G, and A flat. A nice, really pungent chord. Now our walking music comes back in again, and we're up a whole step into the key of G, and the orchestration changes a little bit here, gets a little bit fuller. Got the winds helping out with the melody. And we need a measure of 7-8 there for the timing. Basically, if this was going to be played with a live orchestra, it should probably be just a measure of 2 with a fermata over it and then there'd be some sort of pickup for the um, conductor. As I knew this was going to be done virtually, I could make a measure of 7-8 here, and that's really the solution. Let's look at this bit here. This is kind of a variation of the... Right, but we're in a different key now. Right, so I've got these broken chords here instead of that broken arpeggio. And a little fragment of a melody. Lots of space for people to talk, right? And again, another concept that I'd like to tie in with my previous videos is to vary your orchestration, especially when you're working in the virtual world. It will keep your listener engaged, 
Think of the orchestration and different ways that you can present melodic and harmonic ideas, different colors as characters in a play. That really helps me out. It also helps to mask a little bit that these are virtual instruments because you're not hearing them play for so long without another sound happening. And what happens here is I've got a figure that goes across the bar line. And it ends on beat two of the third measure. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. That plays against the left hand, which is doing that three, three, two breakup that I mentioned earlier. So I'm doing these rhythmic cross rhythm things here, and that aids what's happening with the story. A nice gliss, and I played that gliss in. So this next bit is in 7-8, and it's based around a little bit of a blues scale here in B. And what I do is I've got these three note figures and they're separated by an accent in the middle of the measure with a timpani. So it's one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, boom, one, two, three. It's kind of cool. Now you notice the second time through, the first time through it's just second time through, contrary motion. Variation, that's another way to keep your listeners interest. If all I did was repeat, boom, 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 boring. Having just that little extra figure here in one spot adds a lot. Also, accenting all the downbeats here with just one note in a low brass, probably a tuba. And then the low brass helps us build this lineup. Let's look at this next bit. So we were just in B minor, and now this next section is clearly in D. And another blues kind of a scale. This is another technique that I use and many film composers use where you go up in minor thirds. You're not really modulating, you're just changing key sections. There's nothing prepared. You haven't gone from a key and then had a pivot chord that leads you to a new key. It's just a point modulation where you, you have a key area and then the next time something repeats, you move everything up a minor third or a half step. There are many variations on that theme, but this is the one I'm employed here. And again, Ascending, ascending, ascending melodic figures. Comedy. And then a little diminished figure. Another thing that really helps with orchestrations is don't be afraid to use some of the articulations you have that aren't spiccato, staccato, tenuto, sustained, legato. Use trills, use tremolos, use things that are unique to brass instruments. And what do I mean by that? 
That's perfect for this, what's going on in the screen. I add that timpani effect in there. Don't be afraid to use things like that. They're there for a reason. Okay, there's some business going on. And we have our little figure here again. Again in the key of E. Notice I'm changing key areas all the time, keeping this thing moving forward. I believe in the last video I talked about that as well. What am I doing different this time? I've got the melodic figure here instead of just in the strings. I've got it in octaves and a harmony note. In the winds. And it's not a simple third underneath. Right? It's more of a pentatonic feel you get to it. Again, just small details to make your music sound a little bit different. The next time I repeat. See, just changing things up just a little bit. Variations. Continual unfolding. Again, here, moving up to the key of G from the key of E. And then I'm bringing in those mutes on the brass there and changing the orchestration again. Here we have that cross rhythm section again. And the way I do it this time is instead of landing on beat two, I make a measure of five, four in the second one. And I've got the piano melodic figure doubled with these high winds, and you can also hear a xylophone in there. Let's take a listen. And we land on the downbeat, and we've got an accent. Bum, boom. And we're right into this Afro Cuban ish kind of Leonard Bernstein esque area. Let's take a listen to this. Again, in the key of B minor. All right. We've got this figure here in the low winds, and it's... Very Montuno-esque, fits in nicely with the rhythm and the percussion. And right over here, you see that we are accenting into the downbeat. Got this kind of interesting combination here where I've got in the winds, but the brass is doing this C major chord. Really cool. Again, that's a future video for the summer on harmony. Right, you can hear that I'm doing that is because it's doing a slide from a half step above. But still, this is a viable chord. Da -da 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 -da. Leading into the downbeat, but I'm a 16th note early. James Brown. Da -da 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 -da. Two, three, four. Always anticipating that downbeat. It's it's really a great technique. Let's take a listen right from here. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 right? But what I also like about this section is that you've got a melodic figure in the strings in octaves that's also Montuno-like. And that goes against the... So you've got these two Montunos playing against each other.
All right, again, accenting into the downbeat. All right, moving along to the next bit. Kind of a whimsical feel. With that little chromatic figure there in the key of E. This is a key switch right here. That's not really a note. Leading into the downbeat. Again, using the effects at the end of this with the brass slides and the mutes in the French horns. But as far as the melodic figure goes, I've got that. This is just an E major chord with some neighbor notes. Ending on the five chord. Then coming up next, I bring in just a fragment of that B minor bluesy thing. Uh, again, sorry to keep repeating this stuff, but notice there that there's that glissando in the timpani. This was in b sort of B minor, but I've got this major in the strings really adds a sort of an eerie quality to it. All right, I'm holding out that E. This E here against the D sharp and the B. And this is just more of that B minor blues scale with some chromatic stuff thrown in. And it gets more and more frenetic as we're getting towards the goal of this here. Things get busier and more notier and faster rhythmic values. So let's listen to how that builds up. I don't know how I would exactly describe this section. I'm using a little bit of that B minor blues fragment, and then I'm using effects on the different instrument just to create a sort of like unstable area. It's almost like your foot is on a banana peel and the other foot's on a piece of ice. Okay, got a lot of notes happening there. <laughs> got a lot of notes happening there. So basically, I want to get from this point to here. And I wanted it to be very frantic. And as I've mentioned earlier, I it's very difficult to get Pro Tools notation to be really accurate. But you can just tell there's a lot of notes happening here in the low winds. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this chord here. It seems like I've got a G-flat triad and a G-suspended chord and a couple of cross rhythms happening. Again, a future series on harmony coming up. 
And this next bit is just a hint of a fanfare because of who's showing up on the screen. Everybody should know how to write a little fanfare. <laughs> and again, this is just a key switch. Bringing back that figure that was in E before it. Now we're in F sharp. And we've got the fifth in the bass. Now that really frantic and frenetic stuff that was in the low ends, I bring it back right here, except it fits perfectly with the rhythmic figure that's going on in the strings. And, right, all this stuff you've heard before. And now our bluesy B minor figure is in C sharp minor. And now we've got our walking music coming back and we're in F sharp major. A little busier in the bass here. We've heard this before. All this stuff we've heard before, just tying everything together. So this kind of a thing here, I needed an extra measure, to be honest with you. <laughs> it didn't fit perfectly. So I worked out this little bit. I'm not sure if I like it that much. It does work. And with the dialogue going on, it doesn't sound weird or anything like that, but it is a little peculiar just to add an extra measure there. At the end here, we've got just a little chromatic figure where I had to get to this point here for an accent on the screen, and I just filled it in with this contrary motion figure. When we get over to here, you're going to find that you'll need to write music that's not a lot of notes because there needs to be some sort of musical content in there, but that it doesn't need to draw attention to itself. And that's what's going on here. Now, the rhythms are really weird because I played this with the click off here. And then I picked it up with the click right here. So let's take a listen to this. This is all just following what's going on on the screen. It's a little bit literal from my usual tastes, but in the context of this type of a film, it works. Let's take a look at some of these chords over here in this area here. So I've got this. So these E, B flat, and E flat, or D sharp. This kind of a structure is a very standard, typical structure in jazz piano voicings. Sharp nine. Or here works, this would be E flat, sharp nine, seven sharp nine, but it also could be an A 13. And then this cluster here, has a Phrygian sound to it. 
learning these kinds of voicings really can add a lot of spice to your music. I hear many younger film composers that are excellent with technology, and they're very creative, but they have a very limited harmonic vocabulary. I'm constantly trying to learn more about harmony, because harmony is where the emotion in the music comes from. Let's continue on. Right, just a little connecting. We've heard that figure before, which leads us here to our walking music, and the variation here is in the bass. Again, up a minor third, bringing in the horns here, and then a big chromatic wash coming up. Right, so you see how I combine two elements? I've got this chromatic wash with a little bit of a hint of this, that rhythmically complex. So I'm combining those two elements there. And the ending. Okay, so just like a silly figure, again with those neighbor note things. Just A, E, A. And end credits brings us back the opening titles. Just a little bit longer introduction. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this has been informative. Please leave any comments or questions below. If you like this video, if you'd enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe. And to be notified, ring that bell. I've been Pete Calandra. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. This is the fifth lesson of this series, and I'll link to the playlist with all five videos below. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. Leave any comments below. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.
Thank you. 